My name is Paul Weirich. I'm chairman and CEO of the Free Congress Foundation. My question is for all the candidates. What do you intend to do to counteract the homosexual agenda? Ambassador Keyes, take a stab at that. I think that first and foremost, we have to make sure that we defend the natural family, that we pass the amendment that will be required in order to make sure that the strategy of the gay lobby doesn't result in the destruction of traditional marriage. Second, we have to restore the understanding of what marriage is. I heard tonight a shocking statement that somehow the state can withdraw its respect for and support for the natural family as ordained by God. I'd like to remind you that the family preceded the government. Before we had a government, we had a God-ordained family that supported and represented the natural rights of our humanity. And the government is obliged to respect those natural rights not to destroy them. So I think that it will be important to restore that understanding which supports our reasonable belief that the family ordained by God and tied in its mission to procreation that represents our bond to our posterity must be respected under law and understood by the American people in terms of that respect. Representative Hunter. Well, I think uh, I like Alan's idea that the most important thing we can do is to support that bedrock of, of, uh, of this country, and that is the American family, the traditional family. So certainly we've all said that we would uh, very strongly support a constitutional amendment for one man and one woman. I think beyond that, we have important institutions in this country that we must support and fortify and continue to support and fortify. One of them is the military. And we had a major fight a couple of years ago to uh, allow practicing homosexuals into the military. I led the opposition to that, uh, to that attempt, and I think it's, it's only because we have been able to resist that particular attempt that we have the very best military in the world today. I think also, I think also institutions like the Boy Scouts should be maintained, and every American family should have the right to say, it's a matter of moral principle that we do not accept homosexual activity. Dr. Paul. All rights are individuals. We do not get our rights because we belong to a group. Whether it's homosexual, women, minorities, it, it leads us astray. So it's much more important to understand that all individuals have the right to their life. If they do no harm, you don't try to do a whole lot about it. If you want to change people, you change it through persuasion, through family values and church values. But you can't do it through legislation because force doesn't work. But uh, there should be, though there's no, you don't get your rights belong to your group, a group can't force themselves on anybody else. So there should be no affirmative action for any group. So if a homosexual group want to enforce their way on us, there's, there's no right to do that either. But at the same time, you should eradicate all these hate laws. These hate laws indicate that there's something subjective in hate laws that indicate that some people would receive a different penalty on others. This violates the principle of the importance of the individual individual and confuses us about the importance of individual rights, which is the purpose of the Constitution, defend our individual rights. Senator Brownback. Hey, I like to Duncan Hunter's statement, and I want to associate myself with that, and I fight for those same sort of issues in the Senate. I want to point something out that's a difference between the parties. General Peter Pace, uh, recent chairman of Joint Chiefs of Staff, stood up for the don't ask, don't tell policy in the United States when criticized for that, and he just said, you know, it's the policy. Uh, it's something I think that's very clear. It was part of his, uh, his faith, and he believed that this was the right thing to stand up for. Every Democrat presidential candidate condemned him for saying that, and I stood up for General Pace because we should stand up for other people when they will stand up for these basics. It's saying that don't ask, don't tell is a good policy, and it's saying that this is the right thing for us to do in the military. And also on the hate crimes legislation, this is something we've got to fight against, that somehow that the thought is what the crime is and that that being moved into 
uh, an agenda not allowing people to speak their beliefs about homosexuality. John Cox. I agree with Sam. I agree with Duncan and Alan. Uh, let me add a few notes of common sense to this whole thing. Uh, you know, this is a free country, and, and we have to respect people's freedom to do what they want to do. But you know what? We don't have to sanction it, and we don't have to sanction behavior, and we don't have to support it financially, and we don't need to put more rights that will create more litigation in this country. The last thing we need in this country is more litigation from rights. We also have this problem with transvestites who want to be school teachers. Well, I got to tell you, what the Republican Party needs to stand for is school choice and homeschooling so that we can keep our children in the schools of our choice. And we won't have to deal with that. I don't know that we help ourselves when we try to moralize to, the, to a large part of the country that is not a believer like us. And I think we need to use common sense. We certainly need to stand up for the proper behavior. We absolutely need to do that. But we need to use common sense and talk about the fact that we can't open the floodgates to polygamy and uh, bestiality and all kinds of other things. Kids, hold your ears. <laughs> Representative well, Ken Credo. I believe that we have all explained what it is that a president can do under these circumstances, what they can do about this particular issue. And again, it's, it's constrained, and it is constrained by the Constitution, and appropriately so. I certainly agree with that. There aren't, I mean, you, you cannot, an individual, the President of the United States, simply can't make a rule, sign an executive order, changing the morality of the country. It can't happen that way. You do so by leadership, as I said before. Also, I agree with John in, on, on this issue in particular in terms of schooling. You know, when you look at the agenda that we're talking about here, where does it manifest itself? It is in the curriculum, in the schools throughout this country. It is, there, there is a very strong movement to influence the curriculum in the schools to obtain some sort of moral, uh, moral neutrality on all issues, including homosexuality. Well, how can you stop that? I'll tell you how. I believe completely in the idea of school choice. I actually introduced a, a voucher system when I was in Colorado in 1992. It is up to the parent. It is up to them to control that school environment. That's where it begins. Governor Huckabee. Well, I'm convinced that the reason that the homosexual movement has become strong is because the traditional family has become weak. When over half the marriages in this country end in divorce, it's hard for a lot of kids to grow up seeing the kind of role models that kids need in order to become the replacements for those of us who are parents now. The basic purpose of a parent is to train his replacement. Where are kids going to learn what a family looks like, what a marriage looks like? if most of the marriages in this country end in divorce. I want us to be very careful that we don't come across as having some type of animosity or hatred toward people, even whose lifestyles are inexplicable to us. But by the same token, as a Christian, we're obligated to stand for that institution that is the only institution from which there really is the definition of family, and that's mothers and fathers, husbands and wives, people related, by blood, marriage, or adoption. 